high above 10,000 feet in the chilly and dry portions of the White Mountains of California, we find these gnarly-looking trees. They're trees that are short, and most people, if they didn't know what they were, would probably think they were dead. But they're actually very alive, and they've been dated to over four to 5,000 years old, making them some of the oldest trees on Earth. And what's interesting about these trees is their preference for growing on a specific type of rock. And that rock is our topic today, dolomite. Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Go Geo. I'm Heather and I'll be your geo guide today. Today we'll be talking about dolomite. Dolomite is pretty much limestone's slightly cooler cousin. We are talking about dolomite the rock as opposed to dolomite the mineral. Yes, geologists do call both the mineral and the rock dolomite, which can be pretty confusing. And just as limestone exists with a variation of its amount of calcite, dolomite too exists as a rock with a variation of its amount of dolomite, the mineral. Clear as mud? It only gets worse from here. Okay, so what exactly is dolomite? Dolomite is a non-clastic sedimentary rock living in the family with the other carbonates, like its cousin, limestone. Accordingly so, dolomite is made up of calcium carbonate, but with the magical addition of the element magnesium. So, Dolomite chemically, in its, say, purest form, like the dolomite mineral, could be thought of as calcium magnesium carbonate. In order to be considered dolomite, the rock should contain at least 50% or more of the dolomite mineral. The rest of the story for dolomite is actually pretty similar to limestone. Dolomite tends to be quite similar in most of its physical and even some chemical properties. You will notice that the texture, and the structures, and even the color will be pretty similar to most limestones you've seen. Most dolomite will come in color varieties, ranging from, say, the whitish, grayish tone to maybe a more tannish. In addition to those properties, dolomite is also quite similar to limestone in its hardness, except dolomite is technically a little harder. Dolomite also responds to weak acids just like limestone. If you remember from any Geology 101 labs, the most fun part of it was probably pouring weak acid onto your rocks. Also a reason that, hey Rob, you shouldn't be licking the minerals to identify them. So it will effervesce slightly, except in most cases it's probably not going to effervesce as violently as, say, a more pure limestone sample would. So it, it's an okay indicator, but not always perfectly helpful in distinguishing between, say, limestone versus dolomite. And because of its similar chemical composition to limestone, dolomite will chemically erode in the presence of natural acids like those that we see in acid rain that tends to cause over many, many years the formation of limestone caves. Dolomite may have a slower process of weathering than its pure limestone companion. You can find fossils in dolomite as well, but you're probably less likely to find as an abundance of fossils as you would in, say, a fossiliferous limestone sample. Formation of dolomite, similar to limestone, is that of a warm, shallow marine environment. Dolomite actually forms from the alteration of limestone, or the calcite or lime mud within the limestone, altered by the introduction of magnesium-rich waters. And just when you thought you were getting it, I'm going to have to confuse you a bit more because geologists also have other terms that they use in association with dolomite or dolomite-like rocks. Sorry, don't shoot the messenger. Maybe it's just like a rite of passage into geology. After this, you get the puns. So we've already distinguished between one of the terms, and that is dolomite rock. So geologists might use the term dolomite rock just simply to distinguish between the fact that they're talking about the rock and not the dolomite mineral. That's simple enough. But then there's also the term dolostone. And you can just think of dolostone as the sedimentary rock that is dolomite. But it doesn't stop there. As within all geology in the real world or in the field, there's going to be a gradient of rock types. So you'll find variations of dolomite out there. 
Depending on the amounts of magnesium and or calcium in the rock, you might have something that's more of a pure dolomite form that you might call dolomite or dolostone. And you might have something that's more on the end closer to limestone. And then we have to take into consideration what we get if we metamorphose these rocks. So as you might know, if you metamorphose limestone, you get the metamorphic rock marble. If we metamorphose dolomite, we would end up with the metamorphic rock. And then in addition to that, we'll have all kinds of variation depending on, say, the amount of silica in these rocks or the amount of other impurities that might be present in the rocks. Dolomite can also be found in association with some valuable ores, such as those you would expect in hydrothermal replacement deposits. Those minerals include pyrite, zinc, lead, and copper deposits. In some cases, when gabbro intrudes dolomite, we get the production of talc ore. I did a whole video on talc, so if you're interested, check it out. I'll put the link in the description. So what is dolomite itself useful for? Well, it is used, like limestone, as a filler in things like asphalt or concrete or other construction materials. It's also used, like limestone, as a flux, which is material that's used in the smelting of ore process. It makes it easier to extract the valuable material that they are trying to get out in the smelting process. Like limestone, it's also used as an acid neutralizer. It is used in flares and flames. It is used as an alloy in aluminum to make things like cans and auto equipment and machinery, as well as other lightweight gear. And yes, dolomite is even consumed. It's actually been used some time as an additive in livestock feed. And more recently, it's becoming more popular as a nutritional supplement. Yeah, dolomite, for its magnesium content. But before you go crunching on the next dolomite outcrop you find, I will warn you that you might not want to do that because dolomite itself, like I mentioned, could contain other impurities, sometimes lead, which you might not want to intake. Your body also probably can't deal with it in this form. It's probably going to be a little crunchy on the teeth, so you might not want to just eat dolomite for your magnesium. There are other natural food sources you can get your magnesium from. So where can you go if you'd like to see some dolomite? Well, one of the most notable examples is actually called the dolomites. It's a massive exposure of dolomite in a mountain range found in the Italian Alps. You can also see dolomite in outcroppings in other areas as well. In fact, the whole time we've been talking, behind us and around us is the bighorn dolomite. It's an Ordovician aged dolomite outcrop that you'll typically find in and around Wyoming. And finally, remember those strange trees we talked about at the beginning? Well, those are bristle cones, and the rock they like to grow out of is the reed dolomite. I actually did a whole video on the bristle cones, the link's in the description. And don't forget, you can find me on Patreon and Facebook. Mm -hmm.